we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head against the Bella Gloss, and it is the uh, Las Arturas uh, 2019 Santa Lucia Highlands, uh, Monterey County, Pinot Noir, against our uh, 2018 Haas Vineyard, which is Sonoma Mountain and uh, so a Sonoma County Pinot Noir. And right out of the gate, these are two, they're priced very close. Uh, the the um, Bella Gloss is um, $47, the, the Haas is maybe $60. It's in the, it's in the neighborhood. Um, they, they could not be more different wines. Uh, we're excited to share them with you. So the Bella Gloss is 14.8%. Wow, really? And I don't think I've ever come across a Pinot Noir that was 14.8%. 14.8%. That is yeah. a very high alcohol yeah, wine. Especially from Monterey County, which is a cooler climate. You mm -hmm. would expect it to be a little, a little bit lower in alcohol. Very mm -hmm. surprising. Yeah. And then ours is like right in the sweet spot of, uh, of uh, Sonoma County. In fact, it's a little low. It's a 13.1% Pinot Noir. And so let's start with a Bella Gloss. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the color. Ooh, that is dark. And this is just a surprising Pinot Noir on all dimensions. I mean, it is opaque. You can hardly even see your finger under it when you put your finger under it. And you know, those who are familiar with Pinot Noir, you know, it's not Cabernet, it's not Zinfandel. It is normally translucent and it, it has sort of this gem-like quality. And this is a really rich, dark color. And it's not that it's not pretty. Uh, it's, no. it's very pretty. It's deep, dark purple. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, I would drink it just looking at it. <laughs> I just wouldn't think it was Pinot Noir. Yeah. I was going to say generally the color range for Pinot Noir is like red to reddish purple. This is full on purple. Mm -hmm. So, um, giving it a nose. Wow. That is a big nose. That is, a, it, it just jumps out of the glass. And if I were at a party, I would love this. I mean, it would, it just screams, please drink me. Uh, it has rich blackberry candy. Um, but if you study the wine, it doesn't have a lot of the characteristics one thinks of with a Pinot Noir. Um, doesn't mean it's not good. It's just, um, it's big, it's rich, it's fruity uh, and yeah. Again, if I if I was a party and somebody served me this and I smell it, I'd want to drink it. It's yeah, it smells dark. delicious. Now mm. that I'm smelling it, I mean blackberry candy certainly. And now that I'm diving into it, it even it almost has like a hint of like cocoa or um, maybe even mm. a coffee grounds. Like mm -hmm. it's a dark flavor in there. But mm -hmm. again, there's there's not a ton going on. It's just um, big and bold and fruity. Mm -hmm. So let's give it. Let's see see if it delivers on the nose. Of course, the mark of any good wine. We're not talking about a award-winning wine or you know great wine but is that the, the the mouth delivers on the promise of the nose and this certainly does yeah yeah it is full rich uh fruit deep blackberry again that blackberry candy um mm -hmm. i don't really get that that kind of cocoa chocolatey thing that I got on the nose. Um, it's very fruity, very full mm. in the mouth, but it's, it's still got a beginning, middle, end. And end. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's right through beginning, middle, end, super smooth, mm -hmm. like very, very low acid. This is this is a cocktail wine. This is, this is a wine that if I were at a party, I would drink a glass of this and I would just be enjoying chatting and, and um, it's rich, it's full in the mouth. It, it delivers everything that the nose suggests. So what would you pair this with? Hmm. Well, you said it's a cocktail wine, so, mm. so little bites would probably be good. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely think, you know, this level of fruit, this level of intensity, you want something with a lot of flavor and, and intense flavor, maybe something like a beef stew. Yeah, well, that would be good if it were paired. If I were at a, at a cocktail party, you know, I think of a classic pairing of Manchego and, um, oh, yeah. and, uh, and quince paste. You know, this would be the quince paste and the Manchego cheese, I think, would go great with this. Yeah, I could totally see that. Mm -hmm. Let's move on and move to our Haas Vineyard Sonoma Mountain Pinot Noir. This is an unusual Pinot Noir. Uh, there's not a lot of Pinot Noir coming from the Sonoma Mountain AVA. Beautiful color. Gorgeous color. 
much lighter than the Beau Gloss. Yeah, I mean, this is a classic Pinot Noir color. It's it's translucent. You can see through it. Uh, maybe not in the screen there, but let's see if I put my finger in it. You know, maybe you can't in the screen, but we can certainly see it here. And uh, mm. wonderful nose. Um, getting back to the color, you know, it, it has that gem-like quality. We were looking at red gems, uh, so as not to be uh, not to be posing. We, we we're thinking we always use ruby, we always use uh, garnet, but there's a new red gem that we discovered called uh, cuprite, and this 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 looks just like cuprite. So you can Google that. It's a it's a it is a, a beautiful red gem. Yeah, and I think the um, another descriptor for the color is also a flavor descriptor. Um, that mm -hmm. that amarena cherry, that kind of cocktail cherry. Mm -hmm. It's both the color and I get it in spades in the nose. Yeah, it's 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 richer than your sort of classic uh, maraschino cherry. It's it's more of the Lexardo uh, yeah. variety of, of cherry. And there there's spice in there so too. I was about to say the same thing. Super spicy. Mm -hmm. So we've got um, mace, very very light hint of cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Now the cinnamon's coming out more. It is coming out more, yeah. Yeah. There's um, kind of a, a herbaceous green note too mm -hmm. in there. Well, let's taste this. You would. Mm. Well, this is a complex wine. This yeah. is a very different wine than, as I said earlier, to the Bella Gloss. It is earth and fruit. And leading with the earth. Actually. Totally. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's definitely, um, especially compared to the Bella Gloss. It's odd because we think of this as our probably fruitiest wine, but mm -hmm. tasting it against the Bella Gloss, yeah. Um, the earth, there's kind of an oregano note. Mm -hmm. um, it's still fruity though. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, that maraschino cherry then comes through. There's kind of a red currant note too, mm -hmm. but it's very bright. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's there's of course the classic cherry, but in this case, the cherry is. I would say it's some sort sort of cross between a plum and a cherry. Uh, it's not that really bright cherry that you smell. It's it's the earthiness brings uh, you know sort of uh, draws it in a little bit. Bright acidity, so much much higher acid uh, profile uh, than the the Bella Gloss. So not a cocktail wine. This is definitely a pairing wine. This is a de definitely a, a dinner wine. What would you pair this with, Ross? Um, you know, I think I'm going to go with your suggestion because we were talking about this earlier. And I think, you know, a grilled Italian sausage um, with uh, maybe some onions and some green peppers. I mean, it's got an Italian sort of bend to it for some reason, you know. Um, yeah, something about that, that oregano or the green note. Um, mm -hmm. Italian varietals to me have kind of a bright red fruit and then a savory quality to them. Mm -hmm. This this wine has that as well. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, just to uh, sort of, uh, complete the picture. It's a medium weight wine compared to the the Bella Gloss, which is really deep dark. You know, it's a heavyweight wine. This is this is the middle middle of the road. So there you go, um, Bella Gloss against the Halleck Vineyard Haas. Um, and again, the Bella Gloss is the um, the um, the Santa Lucia Highlands uh, Los Arturas.